Hey, what's up? My name is Nate, and welcome to another mini Bible lesson. For lesson number five, we're going to be in the book of Titus, chapter 3, verses 3 through 5. So let's start with verse number 3. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others, and hating one another. So what's being introduced here is an element of a concept called total depravity. So what do I mean by that? Total depravity says that as a consequence of the fall, all men are born morally corrupt, enslaved to sin, at enmity with God, unable to please him, and of themselves unable to turn to God for salvation. So the fall is recorded in Genesis 3, and it describes the way that sin entered the world through Adam's disobedience. Our sin, which is willful disobedience to God, comes with specific consequences. So biblically, I'm going to break apart those consequences. But first, let's answer a question. All men, are there any exceptions? And biblically, the answer is no. I love the way that Jesus puts it in Mark chapter 10 when he says, no one is good except for God. The Bible gives no wiggle room for this. It's incredibly clear that we've all sinned and all fallen short of God's standard. All men are born morally corrupt. This is Ephesians 4, 17 through 18. You must no longer live as the Gentiles do. In the futility of their minds, they are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God, because of the ignorance in them due to their hardness of heart. So this is speaking to our conscience. Apart from Christ, all of our minds are deceived. Proverbs 28 says that whoever trusts their own heart is a fool. All men are enslaved to sin. John 8, 34, this is Christ speaking again. He says, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The Bible gives two options. Either you're bound to sin or you're bound to Christ. If you're bound to sin, then your life is guided entirely by pleasure. If you're bound to Christ, then you live for his purposes. All men are at enmity with God. Romans 8, 7 because the mind is hostile to God, it does not submit to God's law, nor can it. The Bible says that we're alienated and estranged from God at birth. We naturally do not humbly and submissively seek after God. Romans 8 goes as far to say that we can't. All men are unable to please God. This is Hebrews eleven six. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Proverbs calls the sacrifice of the wicked an abomination, which means that our good deeds and our giving of ourselves is only pleasing to God when we have a relationship with him. Anything done outside of that is worthless. All men are unable to turn to God for salvation. Romans 2, 4, God leads to repentance. On our own, we don't seek God. Our faith, which is linked to our salvation, is supplied by God. Hebrews 12 calls Jesus the initiator and perfecter of our faith. So to recap, all men are born morally corrupt, enslaved to sin, at enmity with God, unable to please him, and of themselves unable to turn to God for salvation. So that is not good news. But if we keep reading verses 4 and 5 from Titus, we'll get to the good news. It starts with this word, but. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. So our salvation is based on God's goodness, loving kindness, and mercy. And that makes it incredibly good news. I hope that this video has been helpful to you. Thanks for watching.